Hello friends, how are you today? In this video, we are going to talk about generative AI design pattern and generative AI architecture pattern. If you are a solution architect or generative AI architect or data scientist or data engineer, you must definitely know about the difference between design pattern and architecture pattern. And especially generative AI design pattern and generative AI architecture pattern. I'll give a clear difference between these two items. Generative AI design patterns are nothing but the repeatable template that can be used for your organization to produce a model that is going to serve for your business use case. For example, if you are going to create your own model that is particularly large language model, you must follow certain pattern to produce the model. So that pattern can be repeated for your specific LOB so that you can produce a model that is going to be serving specifically for your particular LOB. And this pattern can be repeated in your organization for multiple LOBs. That is called generative AI design pattern. And what exactly generative AI architecture pattern? Generative AI architecture pattern is not only going to deal with your model, but also it is going to deal with your data, application, and other platform components in your organization. So these are the clear differences between these two patterns, generative AI design pattern and generative AI architecture pattern. What I'm going to do here, I'm going to create a new playlist and add the videos to explain about generative AI design pattern and generative AI architecture pattern. So in this video, I picked one particular generative AI design pattern and explained the architecture for you to get benefit out of the design pattern. And also, I have put together the architecture diagram for one of the key generative AI architecture patterns. And we are going to talk about how that pattern is going to be useful for you to use in your organization. And also, as a solution architect or enterprise architect or generative AI architect, how you are going to use that pattern effectively to solve the business problem for your organization. So let's get into the action. Hope you can see my screen. So this is about generative AI design pattern. As I said earlier, it's a well-tested, validated, and repeatable template that can be applied to solve business problems specific to the generative AI model. But here, we are not going to talk anything about the application or platform or data. It is specific to the generative AI model. Here are the list of generative AI design patterns available. Generative adversarial network, variational auto encoding auto-regressive model, diffusion model, transform-based generation, sequence-to-sequence, and conditional generation, and the list will go on. So we are going to pick one particular generative design pattern here, the first one, generative adversarial network. And we are going to see like how that is going to work. If you are a data scientist or data engineer, you must know how this GAN works and how you can use this design pattern for solving generate a specific problem in your organization. So if you look at this diagram, this generative, generative adversarial network design pattern has two models. One is generative generator model and another is discriminator model. These two models are at the network level and you're going to use the input and give the input to generator A model that learns the input and produces the output. And that output will again be passed to the discriminator A model. And also discriminator A model will take the real data and compare the output generated by generator and validates the output and produces the most accurate output for your user. So not only discriminator does this job, but also it passes the output generated out of this discriminator A model to both the discriminator and the generator so that these two models will learn the data properly to produce an output. So this pattern can be applied for large language models or any model that is going to produce a video content or audio content or image content. Irrespective of the form of the output, this pattern can be used for your organization or if you are creating a new model for your organization. And also, if you are planning to pick a model from a public service provider, uh, you can 
validate that model against this pattern and make sure that that model aligns with the pattern and that is going to solve a business problem for your organization. So this is a simple RTG diagram for generative adversarial network design pattern. And if you look at here, we are not going to talk anything about the application or platform or any other components. We are going to focus only on the model and the model generation and the model output. Moving on to generative architecture pattern. As I explained earlier, generative architecture pattern is also well-tested, validated, and repeatable template that can be applied to solve generative business use cases or problems but in, it involves not only the model, but also the application data and platform. We will see the architecture soon, but here are the list of generative architecture patterns available, and this list will go on. The most familiar one is retrieval augmented generation, reasoning and acting, reason, plan and act autonomously, retrieval augmented fine tuning. These are all the key generative architecture patterns, and the list will go on. We are going to add the new generative architecture patterns in the list and we are going to make a video and make it as a playlist for you to learn more about generative design pattern and generative architecture pattern. So let's move on to know about what exactly the retrieval augmented generation pattern means and how that is going to be helpful for your organization. So this is a simple architecture diagram for retrieval augmented generation. Uh, before getting into detail of this retrieval augmented generation architecture pattern, I just wanted to explain about what exactly the retrieval augmented. So retrieval augmented means when you input the data to a model, that model gets the input and uses the data, your organization data, to validate the input and produce the right output for your input. But also it uses the public data or knowledge-based data, whatever you're going to provide with, and produces an accurate output for the input that you provide with. That is called augmented generation, retrieval augmented generation. It's going to retrieve the augmented generation of the data with the help of additional data set available for the particular input that you have provided. So if you take an example of a retail company wherein if you want to produce a chatbot application for your customer satisfaction, you can use this retrieval augmented generation wherein you can adopt an LLM and that LLM is built with um, a GA network model or any specific uh, large language model design pattern. And you adopt that large language model and build an application by connecting with your organization data and also with the public data. So there are technologies available in this world that you can use those technologies like what's next dot data or what's next dot governance, all those key products available here to use with this architecture so that you can produce an output that is going to be very helpful for your retail company to create a chatbot and solve the key customer satisfaction problem for your organization. So if you take um, the retail company example, you may want to create a chatbot application that is going to help your customers when they talk to the organization over the chatbot. And you would be connecting that large language model with your organization specific data. And you might be collecting the data from different data sources. You may have the customer data from the customer preferences and mobile application, and you may have additional product details from your inventory. All those data are collected and stored into the data source where this LLM can go and talk to the model, talk to the data and pull the data and produce output for your customer so that the customer will be satisfied on all the queries that they raise against this chatbot. And also your large language model must talk to the internet specific data or the data available in the internet to validate or add value to the data what you stored in your organization. And for that, you must need to connect to the knowledge data source or any data source like internet data source and collect those data and compare it with your own data and produce a most accurate output for your customers. So this is about retrieval augmented generation, generative architecture. And similarly, we may have 
multiple architectures for uh, generative AI architecture. We will be going to uh, produce the video accordingly and you can learn from that. And when it comes to other industries, if you're going to look at um, business um, industries, like if, if you take an example of uh, banking services company, and if you take an example of insurance company, irrespective of the industry specific, this retrieval augmented generation architecture will be helpful for adopting the generative AI for your organization. So if you are an architect or if you are a, a decision maker in your organization, explore more about retrieval augmented generation architecture and how that is going to be helpful for your organization to adopt generative AI and solve the key business problem for your organization. We will continue making the video on each architecture patterns and also each design pattern. And we are going to make this as a playlist and publish it here. If you like this video, give a thumbs up and share it to your friends so that they will also get benefit out of it. And if you have not subscribed to the channel, please go and subscribe. Take care. Bye.